Thank you very much for your attendance. Good morning to all of you. My name is uh, Furuta, COO and Executive uh, Vice President of the company. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule, uh, out of your busy schedule to attend us. This is the first IR meeting, even though we have the uh, um, the e history of uh, 88 years in the past. So this uh, intends to uh, provide the information about the future and future outlook. This is a uh, very important uh, the meeting to be connected with the investors and the, uh, the analysts and the people in the uh, the, uh, the market. So the, uh, we would like to deliver the uh, sufficient information to you so that uh, you will be able to understand more about us. At this uh, IR day, five members in charge of the business areas, businesses will present their presentations about their specific area and also future strategy. So today is the day one and the uh, Yoshinami Takahashi, Megumi Shimazu, Vivek Mahajan are the presenters today for day one and the uh, Fujitsu Yuvans, and, uh, which is our global strategy and the delivery strategy and the technology strategy to support that will um, be given today. And the, I will also be part of the uh, QA session as well. Tomorrow, the presenters are Hidenori Furuta, myself, Shunsuke Onishi, and Hiroyuki Tsutsumi. And the, we would like to talk more about the, the regional strategies. So the, uh, the core and the theme is the uh, modernization from on-premise facilities and the, uh, the on-cloud and hybrid IT towards the future directions. With the Fujitsu Yuvans as the core, we would like to support customers' digital transformation. And that is where we define as our future growth strategy, growth area, and the, uh, as for their purpose and mission to support the sustainable society. That is another perspective. So the, I hope uh, you will have uh, the better understanding about Fujitsu in these areas. And today and tomorrow, QA sessions will be included today and tomorrow. So we are keen to hear your views and your questions and would like to continue having discussion, dialogue with you on the uh, valuable ideas and the insights from the, uh, the, the financial market is quite important. Equity market is quite important. So the, uh, we are looking forward to hearing your voices and your opinions about us. So this is going to be a two-day session and hope you will stay with us and hope this is going to be a fulfilling and the uh, informative opportunity for you as well as for ourselves. Thank you very much. With this, I'd like to conclude my opening remarks. Now I'd like to start the presentations. First of all, on Fujitsu Yuvan's business strategy, uh, Takahashi uh, will be presenting. Over to you, Takahashi. -san. Hello, everyone, and thank you for the introduction. My name is Takahashi, and I'll be talking about the Yuvan strategy as a whole. Thank you for this opportunity. First of all, before I get into the main topic, uh, let me briefly introduce myself. I worked for Sony for 27 years and I was involved in the international business and also the consumer business. And Blu-ray format launch and software and hardware by integrating them to deliver new services. And that's what I was mainly involved at Sony. And I also worked for Microsoft Japan to promote the cloud business and DX to accelerate DX and I worked for Microsoft for seven years and in 2021, in June 2021, I joined Fujitsu and starting from this year, I became responsible for UVAN's business as a whole and from April, I became the head of a global business solution business group. Now, let me explain the market first of all. The, the past five years, for the businesses to promote the digital to improve the efficiency and furthermore, by promoting digitalization, more and more customers will be able to achieve more and more. Uh, that's 
what was undertaken for the past few years or so. Now in the coming five to 10 years, as you can see here, for instance, to make a GHG visible and not just reporting, but the actual reduction of GHG in supply chain divide in order to uh, accommodate that, to build the resilient supply chain and also to secure the safety in the cities and to also reduce the food loss. Such sustainable transformation will be the core to drive the market. Now, according to the third party data in 2025, we expect that the market will be as big as 8 trillion yen. And also towards 2030, this uh, 8 trillion uh, will uh, expand to 20 trillion yen. This 20 trillion yen market could uh, have a potential to further expand to 80 trillion yen. So this sustainability transformation market, Fujitsu, by promoting a urban spaces, we would like to proactively build the market and drive and lead the market. Now, let me introduce the Uvans business a little bit. First of all, 2021, Fujitsu Uvans was announced, and we talked about seven key focus areas. We identified seven key focus areas, four verticals. First one was the sustainable manufacturing, consumer experience, healthy living, justice society. These four are the vertical areas, and on top of that, three horizontal areas, digital shifts, business application, SAP, be uh, Salesforce uh, and hybrid IT. These uh, four vertical segments and the three platforms uh, will support that to deliver new offerings and solutions. Especially when it comes to the events business technologies, uh, five core technologies uh, shall be leveraged so that our IP will be integrated to roll out the offerings to solve the social issues. Now, let me talk about the UVAN's business model. First of all, UVAN uh, is going to create the market and uh, provide the high value added based on the social issues. In the past, it was more of a products in the industry and business specific sector. But with the, we will like to shift to sustainability transformation offerings, as I mentioned earlier, through the business improvement and visualization, and not just that, but also the actual GHG reduction and reduction of the food loss. We like to make a commitment to those as the actual deliverables and to support the uh, whole value chain across industry solutions shall be provided so that uh, it's not just limited to one industry, one specific uh, sector, but to a wide range of uh, customers and industries we can provide the solutions. The second point is, uh, in the past, it was uh, more of uh, based on the requirements driven by the customer IT departments, but we'd like to shift to issue driven by leading with the consulting so that we can uh, solve uh, issues with uh, a CXO, a line of business to identify the issues and solve those issues. For that purpose, we will be uh, co-developing the actual offerings and accelerate the time to market uh, with the strategic partners and to further expand the value added. The third point is, in the past, it was a SI for the individual companies, but we would like to shift to the global common services, especially as for the global common services, uh, service standardization, and by making uh, in-house IPs, we'd like to secure the scalability. By so doing, uh, we can develop a uh, high uh, profitability. And we need to continue the enhancement of our own cloud digital services. And we'll have the uh, functions running on on cloud and uh, continue to expand that to continuously support the customers. Now, Fujitsu Uvans and numerical targets are on this page. 2022, from 200 billion to 700 billion yen in fiscal 2025. That's how much we'd like to expand this business. Especially, it is an increment of 500 billion in verticals, uh, 400 billion and in horizontal, 100 billion. So that's the plan for our growth. Earlier on, I mentioned 8 trillion yen for the sustainability markets. So 
400 billion out of uh, that is a five percent is going to be a market share to uh, develop this to gain this a 400 so as a total 700 billion in 2025 is the target for the horizontals <clears throat> especially sat service now salesforce those business applications in those areas uh, the market is going to expand significantly and we need to acquire those uh, market so that uh, we can get the capacity capabilities to make sure to get the uh, demand to build this 100 billion yen of uh, incremental now as for the specific measures first of all in the vertical areas the first point the offerings to realize the customer transformation we would like to lead the way in developing those offerings uh, ahead of other companies second one is by leveraging a customer base so we would like to expand the, to cross industry so that only fujitsu can provide these offerings especially when it comes to solution services market uh, we have a two trillion yen of uh, scale so not necessarily depending on the industry but uh, we do have uh, insights the comprehensive insights so I like to bridge them across uh, industry to lead to the offerings and the third point is to strengthen the consulting and coordinate with the partners so I like to use those three measures and then for horizontal we like to strengthen the delivery resources that would be our main action I won't go into the details, but uh, 2023, this fiscal year, UVAL's offerings lineup, uh, we have organized this in the vertical areas. About 24 offerings are already available on a global basis. I won't go into the details here, but to support that, the horizontal offerings to support that, and SAP service now, Salesforce, those uh, high level modules, uh, we would uh, develop, uh, we will offer them as a part of the services. Now, let me talk about the specific uh, case example. What kind of offerings are available as one example? This is uh, an offering called the Smart Seaport. This is now being negotiated in progress for the global ports uh, authorities that uh, we are uh, in discussion, specifically in different uh, ports. With the globalization, there is an increase in the volume of the transportation, and with the bigger vessels, there is an increase in burden of the operations at the ports. So those are the issues. So even in the COVID-19, uh, there was a stagnant uh, distribution at the ports uh, with the divided supply chain. Now, with the latest uh, technology, quantum algorithm and AI cybersecurity, by leveraging those technologies, we would like to optimize operations at the ports. And in terms of the actual market, uh, it will be as big as 400 billion yen, and uh, this shall be rolled out on a global scale. Especially our technologies, the blockchain, and the quantum technologies uh, can be applied here. And the second area is what we call virtual pharma offering opportunity. And the, uh, with a number of uh, pharmaceutical companies that uh, we are having business discussion right now, as you know, in drug discovery, peptide drug compound candidates are identified and they are in the thousands in terms of the numbers and uh, they need to be narrowed down to tens of them. And it's a major challenge. So by using the computing technologies like a quantum technology, but yeah, we will be able to narrow down such candidates so that the time to market of the drug delivery will be shortened in creating one pharmaceutical product. 10 to the 20 years of, of the time range is needed and significant investment is needed. So the, what is important is, is to shorten the uh, time period for the development. Life science, uh, the market, uh, IT service market is uh, said to be around 1.3 trillion yen. So the, uh, we would like to apply our digital Anida high, uh, high performance computing AI to contribute to this area. Next is a cross-industry offerings. I'd like to talk a little bit about this point. Currently, 
in the uh, the industry, there are societal societal issues like uh, reducing the uh, scope three redu reduction of uh, CO two. Not just the uh, the visualizing and the reducing CO two emissions across the uh, and uh, within that co particular company. Well, how to reduce that in the entire supply chain is a major uh, the requirement, and the uh, it is uh, the. Uh, doing quite well uh, uh, in the overseas markets and the customers in Japan are also uh, calling for the uh, the technologies like uh, the traceability based upon the blockchain and also platform and the based upon the uh, data trusted data uh, will be the other uh, uh, the basis of uh, such uh, capabilities so supply chain the uh, across uh, different industries the uh, the we will uh, offer the solutions in order to, for example, visualize the scope three CO two emission, so that the in a cross industry manner, we will be able to offer solutions uh, the uh, to the uh, social problems. So particularly in manufacturing, distribution, and the retail areas, about the two trillion two trillion yen that is the size of the markets in these areas, not just the vertical requirement, but the cross industry needs. Uh, uh, have been captured by with our uh, capabilities. And next, well, the how to change the uh, the approaches so is the key. So the uh, one to one to one to uh, two, one to n, one to multiples. We would like to expand this approach. So on cloud functions, applications, and offerings will be implemented on cloud and comprehensively offer this to multiple customers so that the time to market will be shortened and the higher profitability will be captured. So that is our intention here. And this is one example and the uh, digital supply chain in the sustain sustainable manufacturing, for example, at the, uh, the BR uh, brewery, uh, AB InBev, the, uh, the, they had the issue about the traceability and the uh, fashion uh, industry the uh, company Tech Tracer. Well, the, uh, the risk supply chain risk management was the issue. As for the uh, major beverage company, uh, the uh, another supply chain, and also the uh, realizing the uh, the traceability of the regenerated agriculture. So these are the requirements of all of these uh, specific customers, uh, and the uh, we can cover all these areas and the uh, uh, the offer sustainability and the uh, reduce uh, time to market. We used to offer individual specific on uh, the offerings to each of them. But the uh, on cloud uh, standardized and the uh, services can be offered so that we can offer scalability and SI from on premise to the uh, on cloud uh, proposals is where we would like to transition to. So, as you know, the uh, uh, in the vertical area, sustainable transformation is the key, a very big keyword. More than ever, technology consulting and the uh, front desk, frontline. The activities shall be unified, and the combined approach is important. And then consulting functions shall be enhanced, particularly expert knowledge, like on the uh, sustainability, manufacturing, distribution, healthcare, and the process mining, industry knowledge, and the data analytics and AI. So the expert knowledge uh, shall be uh, also the, uh, produ the uh, shared with the, uh, the frontline the, uh, people so that um, they will be, uh, will be effective in uh, getting business from the customers. And at the same time, know-how of consulting firms shall be utilized and in working with the uh, customers. The multi-year, the enhancement of the deals and the uh, ACES, ANSYS, which is the environmental the consulting from upstream to offering and solutions and the, uh, the one-stop, the offering of those uh, capabilities will be realized. For horizontal area, SAP, ServiceNow, and Salesforce, a capacity capability of them shall be fully established. So the uh, 3,000 uh, personnel back in 2022, to, uh, we are going to increase them up to 8,000 personnel by 2025. And strategic alliance, well, the uh, last week uh, when we announced the uh, meta management plan, we also touched upon this point. Microsoft, AWS, uh, ServiceNow, SAP, Salesforce, they are core partners. In many ways, uh, they are uh, the, uh, working with us uh, the, in the strategic areas, particularly in urbans. Uh, the uh, further the uh, uh, partnership, like the, uh, the uh, putting urbans in the marketplace or 3S, SAP with these partners, 
the, and their IPs uh, shall be combined with our IPs in providing offerings. So that's what we are doing as well. And at the same time, new partners for UBANs are shown here. Emphasis, which is the environment consultants and the digital twin, particularly disaster prevention, the special information on the e with the data digital twin hexagon is uh, our new partner. To be more specific about the examples, the earlier 930 Microsoft and the uh, partnership uh, with them was announced. Sustainability transformation to real uh, and the uh, cloud solution, the uh, joint development and business uh, deployment was announced earlier 930 this uh, today by using IPs of Microsoft and Fujitsu. Well, Yuvan's business shall be promoted and the uh, competitiveness shall be enhanced. And the second point is uh, the uh, joint development support by the uh, MS engineers and the consulting resources in co-development and uh, mainly in Western markets, go-to-market strategy implementation and also uh, acquisition of new logo uh, through working together. So the uh, partnership and the, uh, of Yuvan's and Microsoft was announced earlier. I skipped the details, but the particularly sustainable manufacturing area, healthy living, customer uh, experience, our expertise and the Microsoft IP will be integrated together to offer the uh, better value of uh, offerings. For example, in the, uh, the retail industry, uh, we have the, uh, the, the scan and go as well as a uh, behavioral anal uh, analytical capability and digital science, uh, digital capabilities of uh, Microsoft shall be combined together to create a new solution and the new services. Another point is about the acquisition of GK software. I'd like to explain about this uh, topic a little bit. GK software focuses upon the global retail industry. Cloud type offerings uh, the, are being offered to the customers by this company. So the uh, global 50 and uh, the mass and uh, the retailers among them, nearly 50% of them are using GK software already. So they have leading edge retail offerings and the solutions. And by having them, to this acquisition. CX customer experience area, particularly towards the 25, 100 billion yen of a business is uh, to be created. Particularly as for offerings by GK software, leading edge, for example, dy dynamic pricing, personalization. Well, the, uh, well they, uh, we are trying something new for the uh, domestic retailers as well. And by using our sales uh, platform, GK Software offerings uh, will be distributed globally. So that's what we are trying to do. So lastly, but not in the least, Yuvan's intense, well, means that the, uh, we will work towards a better where people can live in prosperity and peace. So the, uh, all the, uh, the members and the staffs of uh, the Fujitsu are working towards the direction of Fujitsu Yuvans, and we have technologies for this purpose and uh, Yuvans business. We have uh, uh, the partnership to support uh, Fujitsu Yuvans as well, together with us. So with this uh, framework, we'd like to promote Fujitsu Yuvans and appreciate your understanding. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Next on the, the, excuse me. Next on delivery strategy, uh, Ms. Shimazu is going to be presenting over to you, Shimazu san. Hello, everyone. Nice meeting you. I am Shimaji in charge of uh, Global Technology Solutions in Fujitsu. Before I get into the main topic, let me briefly uh, introduce myself. Ever since I joined Fujitsu, I've been serving customers at the front line as a system engineer for a long time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, uh, the shareholders, investors, uh, for your day-to-day -day support. Now, on the 24th, last week, our president and CEO made an announcement about the midterm management plan. Today, out of that, uh, I'd like to talk about the delivery strategy. 
the delivery standardization and the measures to improve the productivity and also Fujitsu's modernization knowledge center is what I'd like to share with you today. First of all, on the delivery standardization and productivity improvement. And this is the update on the resources on delivery. Offshore center in Fujitsu and GDC, which is the global delivery center and a function to promote uh, the standardization, automation and offshoring in delivery, a JGG or a Japan Global Gateway. If you had to combine these GDC and JGG, the scale of the resources as of the end of uh, fiscal 2022 is uh, 30,000. Out of them, 7,000 in JGG and GDC in seven international locations, 23,000. JGG was established back in fiscal 21 and uh, through integration of SC companies, we've been expanding the headcount scale. And towards uh, 25, we'd like to further expand to 40,000 headcount scale. Uh, the president and CFO uh, gave explanation to the members of the stock market, and uh, they talked about improving the profit by promoting the in-house and standardization. As a matter of fact, uh, so far, we have been uh, taking actions to steadily improve the profitability through various measures, but there's still room for further improvement. The initiatives in GDC and JGG, how we're contributing to the profit improvement. I hope my talk will be of help for you to understand how we contribute to that. Now, as for uh, the uh, measures for the profit improvement, the quality and productivity improvement and utilization rate improvement on top of that, uh, it is indispensable to expand the capabilities to support the Fujitsu UVAS, uh, which will be the future growth areas to realize that. First is uh, to expand the offshoring for the Japanese market uh, with a stronger DX demand going forward. And by enhancing the demand forecast uh, through data driven and to have the resources stand by from the early timing of the negotiation is going to be critical here. Expansion of the internal IT development we need to shift from uh, depending on partners and uh, we have to aim for uh, maximizing the impact of various measures. And the key for uh, standardization automation is uh, the expansion of leveraging JGG uh, to expand the shared services uh, with the Fujitsu development platform as a common ground. We would like to proactively uh, leverage uh, AIs as well. And furthermore, we will also promote the skill shift towards uh, growth areas uh, of the delivery resources. Now, so far we've been uh, working on the resource management by GDC location so far, but uh, going forward, in addition to realizing uh, the across global resource management and uh, to the geo political risks, which is difficult to forecast, we need to enhance the resilience. Uh, and for that purpose, we have to shift away from optimization by location. And furthermore, uh, in promoting these measures, uh, what is extremely important is to maintain a high level of employee engagement. As you may be able to imagine, uh, the biggest assets, the most valuable assets for our business in Fujitsu are our colleagues uh, who are active around the globe and the high level of engagement itself would directly lead to the value of the quality uh, of what we offer. And that's why I wanted to there mention about that here. Now, let me talk about the delivery model that uh, Fujitsu has been promoting ever since JGG was established. Uh, conventionally, the model was to provide the delivery uh, through the know-how that is depending on the individual methodologies based and the people. But rather, as you can see here, uh, through the company wide shared services, uh, which is uh, more organized and systemized, we would like to realize the standardization automation as well. Now, this model uh, kicked off uh, after we started a JGG and uh, it's continuously evolving. As for the shared services, the team structured uh, in GDC and JBB based on the service contents, 
on the pla Fujitsu development uh, platform, which is a secure common platform. Uh, the development operation uh, will be done uh, based on the standardized development process and technology, uh, which enables the standardization and improvement efficiency and the enhancement of the quality. It may be easy to explain in words, but we are still in the midst of uh, making a transition to uh, this uh, company-wide shared service model. Now, this is an internal issue, but uh, there are some cases where uh, we cannot uh, get the necessary resources at the necessary time. And the major factor for that is that the delivery members have not been able to be involved and engaged from the early stage of the uh, negotiation for this issue by leveraging the one CRM data, which has been developed or rolled out right now, uh, we'll be able to forecast the demand on the delivery side. So this will be a very effective way. Now, on top of uh, such uh, demand forecasting, uh, the scale mapping of the 30,000 uh, headcount human talent resources and by uh, leveraging uh, Palantir technology, uh, we can achieve the automation and uh, uh, faster resource matching. So the best resource allocation will be enabled. And within the shared services, uh, by collecting and enhancing uh, the actual ex uh, knowledge of uh, the projects, uh, we can also enhance the knowledge management cycle uh, to realize the high delivery, high quality delivery. So we are working on such organization de development. The evolution and application of this of this uh, delivery model will also lead to increased insourcing and offshoring. Insourcing will not only build technical and delivery expertise, but we also reduce the cash outflows. Promoting insourcing enables project management based upon more real-time data, which can be expected to improve quality and thereby reduce unprofitable projects. In the future, we intend to raise the in-house project production ratio from or insourcing from the current 59% to 64%. This insourcing includes the use of GDCs. As you can see, the offshoring rate is currently 11%, but we will raise this ratio up to 18%. Expanding offshore will not only reduce costs due to the difference in the unit cost of engineers, but we, uh, we will also lead to a more proactive and stable supply of resources and the promotion of global standardization. In addition, we will raise the percentage of standardization and automation application through the use of JGG from the current 30% to 45% by fiscal 2023. And as mentioned earlier, standardization and automation will not only improve productivity, but also optimize investment, optimize the allocation of engineers, and ensure capability in accordance with growth areas, leading to higher utilization. Now, I will explain the expansion of GDC's capability in growth areas. In the GDC, we will significantly increase the ratio of personnel capable of handling Fujitsu's growth areas from the current 10% to 45%. We will, of course, replace skills in response to the changing demand, but we believe it is important to reskill personnel who became surplus through automation and streamlining rather than simply hiring new personnel. We are promoting the advancement of resource management in which business and corporate departments will work together to plan and execute data-driven management that links the skill maps of personnel with future plans for demand and offshore operation projects. We have also established a reskilling program across the GDCs for reskilling in the creation and implementation of educational programs, we will leverage the knowledge of Enable, an Australian company acquired last year, and we'll also collaborate with strategic partners through the Global Strategic Partner Academy, which we have previously announced. 
GDCs currently maintain a very high uh, employee engagement score, plus eight points higher compared to the global benchmark. This is not only a win-win situation in terms of promoting challenges by providing reskilling opportunities, but also in terms of employee retention because the skills are needed by the company. And this is an important factor in shifting skills to growth areas. So, so far I talked about the delivery standardization and the productivity improvement. Next, about the modernization knowledge center. This, the term modernization may have a different range of understanding for each of you. So I will explain the definition of Fujitsu's scope of modernization. Modernization means platforms and application fr frameworks that make the most of variable application assets of the client system change and the modernize architectures, transforming them into optimal IT infrastructures such as cloud systems. It also includes migration to DX and GX. In general, the barriers to modernization are the lack of understanding the customer's own business practices and understanding of the customer's business systems, which is a challenge that is often seen in the market. But Fujitsu can provide an effective approach to modernization because we know customer system and we are also aware of their knowledge as well. Fujitsu's strength lies in its ability to handle the entire process from visualization of operations and assets, grand design, and streamlining of the entire information system to DX and GX optimization. Next, I will discuss the modernization market in Japan where demand for DX is expected to grow. As this graph shows, the modernization and on-cloud markets are expected to expand significantly by 2026 in line with the increase in cloud penetration. In fact, we have seen an increase in the demand for modernization from the trend of business negotiations. Fujitsu's strategy is to expand its modernization and on-cloud or DX business against the backdrop of this growing, growing demand, outpacing the future shrinkage of the mainstream Unix server market. Tomorrow, SEVP Tsutsumi will explain the modernization strategy in tomorrow's session. Fujitsu established the Modernization Knowledge Center in September 2010, or rather 2022, as a center of excellence function for aggressive modernization. This center provides business negotiation support to business producers who deal with customers, technical support to system engineers, and collection and organization of delivery knowledge to promote the enhancement of Fujitsu modernization services through feedback based upon practical experience. As part of this process, we will also develop modernization methods and tools. As an example of such tool, Fujitsu's mainframe modernization tool called Progression, which has a proven track record overseas, is scheduled to be deployed in Japanese market starting 2024. In addition, we will follow up on the implementation of modernization of customer system and promote alliances with strategic partners. We will aim to achieve modernization that exceeds the market growth rate by leveraging our experience in customer operations and systems cultivated over many years. Our knowledge of DX, GX, and the knowledge we have accumulated through our COE function. So this is the last slide of my presentation of the delivery strategy today. We will continue to contribute to the continuous improvement of the gross, mar uh, gross margin ratio through synergies that combine quality, productivity, and utilization improvement, and through aggressive modernization that maximizes our strengths. We will continue these measures with tireless efforts 
and strive for long-term growth in 2025 and beyond, and hope our shareholders and investors will support us in our efforts. I know in the limited time given to me, I was not able to fully explain some of the points, but I hope that this will help your understanding of Fujitsu. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Next, on technology strategy, uh, Mr. Mahajan will be explaining. Over to you, Mahajan Sang. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mahajan, responsible for technology in Fujitsu. First of all, let me introduce myself briefly. Two years ago, about two years ago, I joined Fujitsu as CTO. And right before that, I was at IBM headquarters in New York, responsible for uh, IBM Cloud and Global Technology Service. I was responsible for that. And I was at Oracle and GE as well. Sales technology combined. And then with the experience, I'm serving as CTO right now. Now today, well, Takahashi and Shima has already talked about the uh, modernization. So how can we support that with technologies? I'd like to briefly talk about that. Now, our company, 18 months ago, we decided to focus on five uh, key technologies. Why did we decide to identify those key technologies for sustainability, SX? The most important thing is to be able to manage the data in a centralized way. Without DX, we cannot do SX. So for the purpose of DX, processing and computing a voluminous data and network to connect the data and to get the uh, expertise from data AI without security, our solution cannot be used. So we need to have a security and also uh, converging technologies. So that would be the uh, flow. So that's why we decided to uh, focus on these five technologies. And takasa already talked about uh, some of them, but how uh, our technologies can be an engine for our future growth. Now, the first point is that uh, for these uh, five uh, key technologies, it covers a wide, wide range of areas. So where are we going to concentrate our strengths? What well, we've been working on for a long time and also on a global scale where we can compete, where we have a competitive edge. Uh, those are the uh, premises uh, for identifying these uh, technologies. For instance, AI, we've been working on AI for a long time, and even within AI, uh, AI is quite broad, and various companies are working on that. But for instance, human sensing, extendable, uh, we have strengths in those in, in computing, HPC, supercomputing, quantum, 5G, 6G technologies, and blockchain blockchain security, or as Takaisa mentioned earlier, connection gen and smart city. Now with AI and various technologies can be combined together. It's not that we sell a, a technology on a standalone, we deliver solutions. So computing plus AI, network plus AI, security plus AI. So with the various combinations, we can deliver solutions to the customers. Last month, simultaneously in Japan and on a global scale, we made an announcement about Fujitsu Kozuchi, which is our AI platform on April 20th. Now, Kozuchi, what is our target? Our customers, for instance, you advance uh, seven or four verticals and three horizontals. Needless to say, uh, in interest in various applications, a big data uh, will come along and we need to get the knowledge 
from such data. That's what AI is aiming for. So that's why our strengths are IP, other IPs combined that we can deliver the solution using this platform, because it's from the bottom. Of course, there's AI, a core engine and innovation components. And on top of that, what is in the middle or at the bottom, other companies' uh, IPs uh, can also be combined. And from the left, the development and uh, ops as well, operation as well. So in line with the business of the customers to be able to solve the solutions of the customers. For instance, analysis and product uh, portfolio inspection and uh, smart up uh, solution and uh, genome analysis. Our solution can provide the value to the customers. What is often asked is, how about chat GPT? Well, chat GPT, we take it very uh, positively. The reason for that is uh, uh, as we've been uh, delivering AI for a long time, but thanks to chat G GPT, customers uh, management uh, has a higher mindset about the AI and has uh, enhanced the requirements or demand for us. Now, this is the overall positioning of uh, Kozuchi, as you can see. By leveraging our strength, uh, this is the positioning map, human sensing and expandable AI and casual discovery. With uh, the innovation components, we can deliver a solution. And NVIDIA can also be combined as well. And Chad GPT and other companies' AIPs, uh, partners' AI, uh, AIP uh, IP can be also combined to provide the overall solution. Another important factor for AI is trust. This is not just limited to Japan, but on a global scale, AI ethics. For AI ethics, uh, I think we are leading away. So this trust area is part of uh, this cause of G and CDL connection chain technology or trust as a service and uh, disinformation measures. So I won't go into the details, but altogether. Uh, we already have a long history of track record with some customers. So in terms of the trust, the strengths of uh, data technologies and the trust, these two factors will be very important. Another point is another uh, area of our strengths, which is AI and computing for AI. Probably you already know, but the computing and network capabilities are important here. AI and data generative AI, for example, data requirement increases, and then the requirement for the, uh, the computing will also increase. I will come back to the point of network later, but the uh, AI and the computing supporting AI, we have long-standing experience. And for example, at Monia, which is the, uh, the ammonia, the, uh, the catalyst development business, and this is a green uh, chemical, but ammonia itself, the production of ammonia is uh, not uh, very favorable to the environment. So our HPC and AI can be combined so that ammonia's IP can also be integrated to come up with the new way of producing ammonia. That's one example. And to uh, computing as a service to support AI, which is a cost, and the, uh, we announced this last year. HPC technology and digital anida technology. Broadly, Amazon, AWS, Azure, our capabilities we used on those platforms and the, uh, the, uh, the learnings has been stimulated and the computing workload broker, CPU, GPU will be combined to optimize the platform optimization platform. And the, uh, what we intend to do is uh, to uh, combine uh, quantum technology and the HPC so that the, uh, the two environment uh, they can be used at the same time at the customers. Last year, well, the uh, quantum simulator and also superconducting quantum computer this year and the uh, 64 and the uh, qubit and the uh, uh, 
to nanometer technology will also be announced soon. So uh, without the question, this is the area for further innovation. And the other day, last week, we announced Fugaku. On top of Fugaku, generative and the AI technology will be and uh, worked on. So the, uh, this is going to be a large uh, language model based upon Japanese LLM, large language models, uh, mainly uh, uh, today are uh, in English. But the, uh, this time, the focus is the Japanese language and also to LLM the demand for that will yeah, uh, and it will be enhanced and that requires a lot of uh, computing power that's what we can offer and as an exit as uh, takahashi mentioned uh, the output from this uh, can be utilized for Yuvan's business and that's what we intend to do quantum and the computing technology i'd like to talk a little bit about this point at the Fujitsu, quantum technology, probably we are the front runner in terms of the quantum computer, uh, computing software, hardware, and the, uh, we are working on both of them. So, the, uh, so the, uh, we have uh, the, uh, the three technologies related to the, uh, the quantum. We are already uh, studying them and 64 qubit and the 256 and the, uh, by 2025, 1000 bit qubit or well, the a uh, high end the uh, the uh, quantum computing will be offered and together with uh, the osaka university and also with uh, the uh, delft university or well, the uh, the quantum state control and also quantum software there are many way and uh, areas that we are working with these uh, partners as for network for ai this is the uh, to support ai and the uh, uh, computing 5G technology and the virtualization of a 5G. So we have uh, customers like like uh, KDDI, NDT, as well as uh, overseas AT and T. Well, they are, they are using these uh, capabilities and 6G beyond 5G for electron to photon migration transition. So the as the uh, demand for AI increases. The uh, requirement to the uh, network will also increase, like a uh, latency, capacity, the requirement will be more demanding. So that's what we would like to focus upon and the uh, respond to the demand. And the last on the technology, converging technologies. So all these technologies, ultimately, the other people are going to use these technologies. So the, uh, we need to combine the technology and the other uh, social uh, society. So that's what we are trying to do. Uh, the uh, human sensing and the uh, the technology digital twin. These are what we are trying to do in uh, in the uh, the city of Kawasaki Yamagata in Japan for medical the application digital twin uh, is what we are uh, working out together with our customers in Japan and in the UK. Isle of Wight is the place where we are conducting and working on the transportation uh, system, which is uh, the friendly to uh, the environment. And in Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon University, well, the social infrastructure is the area that we are working together. Uh, we are still at the very early stage, but the, uh, together with customers, starting from an early stage, mobility, energy, the uh, disaster prevention, the uh, mitigation and education, and the water, food, or well, the uh, uh, six uh, digital twins are uh, the, uh, offered from Fujitsu. And exit from this is uh, the uh, way uh, Takahashi's uh, the team can work on. And the, uh, the, we offer this uh, to the customers ultimately. And the uh, technologies, and the, uh, we would like to utilize the, our technologies, competitive technologies globally. And, Number one is the position that we'd like to capture. So in Japan, naturally, we have uh, engineers and the uh, researchers, engineers, but they globally in Silicon Valley, US, and in the UK, in Europe, uh, we have uh, research institutes in these places. And additionally, the uh, quantum computing and the AI software, uh, we established a new research institute in India and in Israel. And the, uh, uh, this um, the, uh, the base focuses upon the uh, security and AI. 
So this is another new uh, research institute established this year. So globally, comprehensively, technology advancement is uh, what we are trying to continue and achieve uh, the continuously. And we are to working together with the global universities to take up the challenge of technological development. Lastly, but not in the least, once again, so create innovation and business through technologies and offer value to the customers. That's what, what we are trying to do. So I appreciate your kind of cooperation and understanding. Thank you very much. <laughs>